Good morning, ESM. Today marks the beginning of the 93rd Scripps National Spelling Bee. When you watch TV and realize, you may really not be as smart as a fifth grader, at least not as literate. More after news in an update. Democrats and the Onondaga County Legislature today will release their own plan to spend the 85 million county executive Ryan McMahon wants to use to build a new aquarium. They are holding a rally at 10 a.m. today outside the Onondaga County Courthouse. They are calling it Rally for Our Kids, and McMahon, a Republican, has proposed spending $85 million in surplus cash to build an aquarium at the Inner Harbor in Syracuse. He has been unable to win over enough legislators since October when the aquarium was first proposed. Legislator Bill Kinn, Syracuse, shared an alternative plan in advance of today's rally. It includes $40 million to address lead paint poisoning in children, including $30 million to remove lead paint from homes. In other news, this is kind of sad, Grandma Brown's baked beans remains closed after they had to shut down during the pandemic. As Central New York favorite, Grandma Brown's has been in the Oswego for many years. The granddaughter of the company's owner, Sandra Brown, said that she cannot hire enough people, so Central New York will be forced to turn to bushes for their baked beans. In other news, two women who have lived in the same city for over 30 years find out they are sisters. Their kids graduated from the identical high school in Las Vegas on the same day, which is very coincidental. Michelle Dugan, knowing she was a foster child, decided to take a DNA test. Next thing she knew, a woman named Trish Morgan had reached out asking to meet for coffee. As soon as they saw each other, they both knew they were 100% sisters. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wednesday, June 1st marks the beginning of Pride Month to celebrate LGBTQ plus pride and in honor of Mr. Brandon, Prism and Something Better will be hosting the second year of the Pride celebration in the main lobby. Feel free to wear something, some Pride gear or flags and stop by. The celebration will be starting at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Pride stickers and flags will be handed out to where to show support to LGBTQ plus students here at ESM. See Mr. Ward with any questions. Important news about getting your yearbook. Yearbooks are being distributed this Friday. To get your yearbook, you must bring the invoice that was mailed home to you over the weekend. See or email Miss Baker with any questions. Support the class of 2024 Dining for Dollars tomorrow, Wednesday, June 1st at Chipotle on Erie Boulevard from 5 to 9 p.m. Join PRISM and Something Better tomorrow morning for the start of our annual Pride event. Enjoy a dance, grab a flag, and show love and support for our amazing The first annual United States National Spelling Bee first started in 1925 in Louisville, Kentucky when nine local newspaper companies came together to host an event encouraging literacy. Today the event is sponsored by the E.W. Scripps Company, which started as a chain of daily newspaper and now deals with broadcast radio and show news. In order to become qualified to enter the competition, spellers have to win a local spelling bee approved by the SNSB and can't be older than 16 or beyond the 8th grade. Although it's the, called the National Spelling Bee and a majority of the students involved are from the U.S., there's been international contestants from places like Jamaica and India. Before we go on to more of the specifics, let's check out weather with Grayson. Today is the calm before the storm because as you can see there is completely clear skies but as we get into later into the week we're going to get more and more rain and I'll cover that after I go over today. Today we'll have a high of 72 and a low of 52 so it's going to start the week a little colder but it's going to slightly warm up but we're mainly going to be around high 80s or low 80s rather. But tomorrow like I said is really when storms start. Today on Tuesday is the calm before it. And tomorrow on Wednesday is going to be muggy and storms can be strong or severe. Thursday is going to be very similar to Wednesday with strong or severe storms and same with Friday. Saturday and Sunday will not have storms and they'll be much calmer. With that, I'm Grayson with your weather.
Every year, Scribd compiles a collection of 4,000 words for students across the globe to use as study guides to reach the competition with three different spelling difficulties. These 4,000 words can look a bit tough, especially once you reach the final level of difficulty in spelling. However, if you look online hard enough, you can get to one of the most impressive list of words, words that have won contestants championships. Starting early on the list, you find words that don't seem outrageously hard, for obvious, obvious reasons, as times are different. Although not to discredit the early 1900s winners, they had their fair share of pretty difficult spelling. You can find words like therapy, chlorophyll, initials, torsion, eczema. Once you reach the late 1900s to now, some of the words look, look made up. It makes you really understand why kids ask for the definition so much later in the competition. And in case you were wondering, Phineas and Ferb did come in clutch in 2019. One of their eight co-championship final words was aglet. What other awesome plays happened over the weekend, Tanner? The girls track team capped off an undefeated season with a sectional title with a score of 155.5. Ariana Brennan won the pentathlon with a score of 2,424. Aquatic Pony won the 100 hurdles. Ivani McDuffie won the 100 meter dash. The 100 relay team consisting of Sophia Jackson, Riley King, Kaylee Maloof, and Ivani Maloof won. Amber Hayes won the 400 hurdles, and Rhiannon Butchko won the high jump. The boys track team came up short of the sectional title, placing second with a score of 101. Rocky L dominated the meet, winning all four of his events, including the 100 dead hurdles, triple dunk, and 100 dash in the 100 relay. The re 100 relay team, consisting of Dan Tovar, Mike Parks, and Aiden Hurt, broke the school record again with a time of 43.51. The Boston Celtics will face the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals after a Game 7, 100-60 to 96 win against the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. Jason T Tatum led the Celtics in points with 26. And I'm Tanner for the sports. We hope you enjoyed today's show. So from everyone here at The Morning Show, have a terrific Tuesday.